But um, we're going to finish up today with the final speaker, Chong Shin. Good evening, everybody. So my name is Chong Shin. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers to give me this wonderful opportunity to present my work. So today, I'm going to talk about the role of FHO-1B, four and a half limb domains 1B, in regulating the liver versus pancreas fate decision and for beta cell regeneration. So as all of you know that the liver and the pancreas are two essential organs of our body that regulate essential metabolism, including the glucose metabolism. So therefore, it is really essential and critical to understand how these two organs are generated or regenerated upon injury. So previous studies show that the liver and the pancreas emerge from a shared progenitor cell pro the population. So if you look at these, the figure, so this is embryonic stage 8.5 mouse embryo. And if you look at this, uh, the, the area, so the, the liver and also the pancreas, especially ventral pancreas, originate from this common progenitor cell population. However, due to the size and the location of this progenitor cell population, it was extremely difficult to identify a single bipotential progenitor cell, and also how this single bipotential progenitor cell can be differentiated. So next slide show you the endodermal uh, development of progress of the, the liver and then pancreas from endoderm, shown here, this uh, the blastula stage mesoendoderm from here to the, this endodermal layer, and then this endodermal layer merge medially, and then they become this mature liver and then pancreatic cells. So based upon these uh, developmental processes, we try to under, the, use the zebrafish and tackle these questions. So I just show you that these are the uh, approximately six to eight somite stage endodermal layers, and we try to tackle the question using the zebrafish. So we use the single cell image tracing technique using the, the caged fluorescent molecule. So we injected the caged mo fluorescent molecule at the one cell stage embryo, and we uncaged this fluorescent molecule around six to eight somite stage in the si single endodermal progenitor cell, shown here. So you can see that there is a medial cell and the lateral one cell, lateral two cells, based upon this medial lateral position, and we successfully um, uncaging and then labeling this individual progenitor cell. And we trace the fate of this individual endodermal cell. And as you see in the next slide, this medial cell and the lateral one cells, they mainly give rise to this pancreatic progenitor cell the pancreatic cells, but lateral two cells, as you've shown here, that these lateral two cells can give rise to the both liver and then the pancreatic cells. So this was the first in vivo genetic evidence that there is a single bipotential progenitor cell that can give rise to both liver and the pancreas. So next we ask the question that what signaling molecule can actually uh, regulate the, the fate of these progenitor cells. So we perform multiple expression analysis of different signaling molecule, and we realized that the BMP2B shown here, the tensomite stage embryo, the BMP2B is expressed in the lateral parietal mesoderm just right next to this the bipotential progenitor cell. And the very interesting is that this BMP2B signaling expression pattern showed the recipro reciprocal expression pattern compared to this PDX1 expression. So PDX1 is the very well known the pancreatic determination gene. So you can see that there is a, this reciprocal expression pattern. So BMP is more laterally expressed, and then PDX1 is more like medially expressed. So through this, so, so after that, so we have this BMP to be expression. So we overexpress BMP to be, and as I just explained to you that these lateral one cells usually give rise to the pancreatic cells, but when we overexpress BMP to be, then these the pancreatic cells give rise to liver cells. So we know that by BMP to be overexpression that this can really cause the pancreatic to liver fate switch. So through these uh, 
the knockdown and uh, the overexpression, or as well as a single linear tracing, single cell linear tracing experiment, we found out that uh, the L2 cell is actually the bipotential hepatopancreatic progenitor cell. And then also the BMP2B signaling is the, the signaling, uh, the pathway which regulate the fate of this, the endonormal progenitor cells. However, we really didn't have any clue that what are the downstream target genes of BMP2B signaling pathway regulate this hepatopancreatic progenitor cell fake decision. So we performed the expression profiling shown here. So we dissociate the endodermal cells from either BMP2B overexpressing or DMH1 treated, so BMP2B, the BMP, uh, the inhibited embryos, and we performed the expression profiling of the genes. And as you see here that these are the, some of the list of the genes which show uh, the responsiveness of BMP2B signaling. And as you see here that this one gene, four and a half limb domains, 1B, uh, shows very much profound responsiveness uh, to the BMP2B signaling. So this, uh, and then also these genes function is pretty unknown. So as you see here in this next slide, this shows you the, the, sequence, different, the sequence comparison of zebra fish and mouse. And as you can see that this protein only has a limb domains. So it has half limb domain here, and then also limb domain one, two, three, four. And when we check the expression pattern, as you can kind of uh, imagine that because this is being to be downstream target, this gene is highly expressed in the liver cells. So based upon this interesting expression pattern, as well as the bmp 2 b responsiveness, we knock down the function of this gene using the morphlinol. So as you see here that, so here is a control PDX1 expression a pattern. So as I just explained to you that PDX1 is the pancreatic determination gene. And you can see that PDX1 has this high level in the medially. And then there is a lateral, there is a low level of PDX1 expression. But when we get rid of this gene, then you can see that there is a great lateral expansion of the PDX1 expression domain, especially this high level of PDX1 expression domain. So next we ask that, then what about the, the fate switch? So as I just explained to you that we know that L2 cell acts as a hepatopancreatic progenitor cell, right? And then when we trace the fate of L2 cells, so this is a control case, but when we get rid of FHL1B, then what we realize is that these L2 cell, majority of them give rise to the pancreatic cells, especially pancreatic endocrine cells, and at the expense of liver cells. So then what about the, the opposite case? So when we overexpress FHL1B, so we know that without FHL1B, there is a great expansion of the PDX1 expression domain, then what about the opposite case? So we overexpress uh, FHL1B around six to eight somite stage. So if you see that there is a, the, the PDX1 control expression uh, the pattern, but when we overexpress BMP, the FHL1B, then you can see there is a decrease of PDX1 expression domain, especially this the low level of PDX1 expression domain. So next, we also ask then, then what about the, the fate switch? So as I just explained to you that the L1 cells, the generally L1 cells give rise to the, the pancreatic cells, but when we overexpress FHL1B around six to eight somite stage, then these L1 cells, they give rise to, majority of them give rise to liver cells. So we show very like a, the, the deletion and then overexpression, so we show the fate switch based upon this FHL1B, the, the level. So in summary that we show that we identify the BMP2B target gene called FHL1B, and we show that this gene is uh, essential for regulating the liver versus pancreas fate decision. So we know that this FHL1B is essential, and without this FHL1B, we know that this PDX1 expression, especially the high level PDX1 expression, the expression is really increased. So it's already known that high level of PDX1 expression is critical for inducing the beta cell. So we next ask that what about that if we like get rid of beta cell in the absence of this FHL1B, what happened? So the first we 
just look at the, the control and then FH1 will be more fluid, no, and we check the PDX1 and neural expression at uh, 72 hours post-fertilization. So if you compare this control versus morphina injected one, then you can see that there is a dramatic increase of PDX1 as well as this NeuroD. So NeuroD marks a high level PDX1 uh, domain as well as the endocrine pancreatic cell domain. So you can appreciate there is a great increase of PDX1 and NeuroD expression domain. So based upon this um, morphina data, we used this nitro reductase induced beta cell ablation system and shown here, so we use this MTZ treated one, then you can see that there is a specific ablation of beta cell. Then we ask that then, then also we use this, uh, the, the Kaida photoconvergent. So as you all very well know that Kaida can convert into green to red by the UV light. So we, with this technique, that with this scheme that we can kind of distinguish that the beta cells before ablation and after ablation. So using this, beta cell ovulation system as well as this the kind of photoconversion, we show that without the reduced amount of FHL1B activity actually enhance beta cell regeneration shown here. So as you know that the beta cell regeneration can happen through a couple of different mechanisms. So the first mechanism is that the beta cell regenerate through the residual beta cell proliferation or through neogenesis, either through the alpha to beta cell trans differentiation or from the ductal progenitor cell to the, the beta cell conversion. So you see that th this is a control, the 24 hours after ablation, and we show that, so without FHR1B, then these, the beta cell, majority of beta cell coming from this extra pancreatic ductal progenitor cells. So the the final slide shows you the, the, the hypothesis we made based upon this observation. So we concluded that based upon our experimental data that this is FHR1B expression versus this is PDX1 expression. So FHR1B and PDX1 expression has this reciprocal the expression pattern. And when we don't have this FHR1B, then there is a dramatic increase of PDX1 expression domain. So that, so without the beta cell, then the, 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 the PDX1 expressing cells in the hepatopancreatic ductal system can co convert into the beta cell, so it enhances the beta cell regeneration. So uh, finally, I'd like to acknowledge my lab members. So Jin Su, who's here, then my talented graduate student, and also my collaborators. And also I'd like to thank my um, previous postdoc mentor, Didier Stenier, because I initiated this project in his lab. And finally, I would like to thank my funding source. Thank you very much. Given the uh, reciprocal nature of FH1B in the pancreas regeneration with reduction, would an increase in FH1B have certain effects if there's damage done to the liver? So FH1B overexpression mm -hmm. after ovulation, so? If, if the reduction shows an increase in uh, mm -hmm. beta cells in the pancreas, mm -hmm. would an overexpression because of the fate switch show any effects in liver regeneration? Liver regeneration? Yes. Um, we really didn't look at the FH1B overexpression in the liver regeneration. We showed that without, so with more excessive amount of FH1B, there's a decrease of beta cell regeneration for sure, but we didn't really look at the, the liver regeneration part. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks to the speakers for a great session.